Greetings and welcome to a new video about another discrete time system stability analysis. We continue with the example number four and we will use the jury stability test in our example. In this case, we will discuss the PI controller design. So we will have a specific discussion of the stability having a PI controller in our control group, which is shown here as we did in the previous videos. We'll do the calculation step by step and also verify these in MATLAB simulation. So let's look at our problem. In this case, we have now this closed loop discrete time system given here in general form. We have the plant, which is just a first order given in Laplace domain and a PI controller also given, given in the Laplace domain with a K1 and a K2 as the gains. And what we want is determine the PI controller gains K1 and K2 such that this system stable, of course, in this configuration. The sample period here is 0 0.4 seconds. So K1 and K2 are unknown. And in this case, we don't really bother about how much we need to, uh, let's say, choose the K1 and K2 for the specific specification, let's say the steady state error or maybe the overshoot. That's not really the business, it's just the stability. Okay, now we can convert this in that forum. And what does it mean? The PI controller will then convert it to a PI controller in the discrete time domain. And the plan and the zero order hold together. And also the sampling will form a new transfer function GP in terms of the Z parameter. So, so let's look at the solutions. We start with the zero order hold because that is also a transfer function in the S domain given by this, so 1 minus e to the power minus st, t with the period of our sampling over s. Now we know the 0 0.4 seconds, so we can just substitute that and we have this. Now we also know that the plan with the sample and the hold operation can be written like that. So we have 10 over 5 of s5 and times the zero order hold operation that can be then written like that. Now in this case, we can combine everything. Now we will use this transfer function to determine the discrete time version of our plant. So the Z transfer of our GS, which is the multiple of that zero order hold a transfer function and the plant given in the S domain, which will be this. So the Z transfer of that G is then Z transfer of that one. That will result if you look up in the Z transfer pair tables, you will get this one. So this is what you get. You can check that or you can believe me. And this is the result. Now the PI control in Z domain is also required. So this is the PI controller in the Z domain. So Z transfer of that, uh, the S domain representation, that will give you K1, that will just go, but K2 over S will be then K2 times Z over Z minus one, sort of the one over S, which will be converted to Z over Z minus one. That's also from the Z transform table. Okay, now we have another necessary information and we can of course also convert this to one fraction. So you're gonna get actually K1 times Z minus one over Z minus one plus the second term. Combine that together in one fraction, you will get this. This will be helpful of course, when we work out the problem uh, later on in the future steps. Because the correct equation we know also from the root locus design is always one plus the loop transfer function is equal to zero. Loop transfer function in this case in the Z parameter and the loop transfer function in this case is just the controller times the plant times one because of the unity gain feedback configuration. That means in this case, since we have one fraction, it's easy to multiply. So we have the plant, which is 1.7293 over Z minus this number times the plant expression, I mean the PI control expression, and we have everything. Now we can multiply the left and the right hand side by Z minus one times Z minus 0 0.13534. This is given here. So you will get one times that, and then exactly the same as in the numerator here. So it is done 1.7293 times this, which is shown here. Now we have the expression. We are, of course, interested in a polynomial expression. So I will work out the parentheses and then collect all the terms together. 
Uh, first do that, so z minus 1 times z minus 1.3534, work out this one, and also work out the other terms, you will get this. Now collect everything, which is then z squared, also with a z and also the constants together, so I see a z squared alone here, I see a z part here, but also some part of the z here, this is a constant, and this is also a constant, so they can be taken together. Now this is now the final result, so the z all the parameters or the coefficient for the z and also the constant and just z squared here and this will be then our characteristic equation so we call it again d which is then the denominator of this closed loop uh, transfer function of this one and we have now re uh, the required characteristic equation for the future steps okay let's bring it here for the next analysis before we move on, we know that we have a second order system or second order polynomial. So we also want to know what is then the second order polynomial in the general form. Again, this is always handy to write it down first. This we have a2 z to the power 2 plus a1 z to the power 1 plus a0 z to the power 0 is 0. Now we can now bring up our characteristic equation and then compare the like terms and then determine the coefficient so the a2 here is 1 a1 is actually this term so in up to z so everything in front of the z and the constant term a0 is actually this one because z to the power 0 is 1 so let's bring up the coefficient these are the coefficients so we have now everything to work out the stability test in jury uh, stability test method. Now step one is check the first conditions. Before we move on, let's also verify how much rows we need to have in our table, in our jury table, if that is of course necessary. And how much conditions do we need to check? So how much constraints? We have a second order system. So n is 2, that means 2n minus 3 rows. That means 2 times 2, 4 minus 3, 1 row. So one row is actually it is one row. That means we only have one row, so we don't have to bother about a table. So because now we can also check how much constraint do we have, two plus one, which is three. So in the first condition, we know also from the previous examples, we already check three conditions, three condi uh, constraints, and that is already done, so we don't have to check any other constraints anymore, and so you don't have to set up the table the jury table. So first condition is a0, absolute value of that, the coefficient must be smaller than a n. And why? What we have is an n is 2, so that means absolute value of a0 must be smaller than a2. That means this value here, the absolute value of that, must be smaller than 1. Now if I work it out for the k1, I have 1 minus this value, so this number 0.13534 divided by the minus 1.7293 so you can see it here that will give me the k1 must be larger than minus 0.5 that is the first condition so we can say okay we know there is some restriction for the k1 i need to be above minus 0.5 so if it is for example minus 1 i will have an unstable system but if it is, for example, maybe 0.1, that will be fine. That's just, of course, looking at the first condition. Let's also check the second condition because this, the characteristic equation evaluated at 1, that means z is 1, must be larger than 0. Now substitute now in this characteristic equation for z 1, and then you will get this. And then work this and that must be larger than zero and work this out so everything can be then collected so you will lose something because i have one here and i also have 0 0.13534 that together is 1.13534 1 but i have also the same thing here in negative form so i will lose that term i only have that 1.7293 times the k1 and k2 in parentheses and a minus another term so this is actually shown here so the k1 terms I will lose and I only have 1.7293 times k2 must be larger than 0. And that means k2 must be larger than 0. Pretty simple. 
So the second condition I have to meet is the k2 is larger than zero. So if I make k2, let's say negative, or exactly zero, exactly zero means much unstable. If I make it negative, I will have an unstable st system. If I, for example, succeed to make this k1 larger than minus 0 0.5, but I will make this, let's say, minus one, still an unstable system. So I have to meet all of the conditions. Okay. The next one, the final one is the minus one to the power n times the characteristic equation evaluated minus one larger than zero. This n is of course two because we have a second order system and then minus one substituted in this expression, everything here will be then this. Now you can again see what you get. So minus one times minus one. So minus one squared is one. So this is one, so you will lose that. So that will be then of course larger than zero. Now, if I work this out and collect the terms, etc., after a couple of steps, you will get this. So believe me, this is true. I have checked that several times. Now I have to sort of set an equation to check again our condition. So we can now take these two terms, so the final two terms to the right side and divide by, so the left and the right hand side of this equation or this inequality by 1.7293. And that will give you this. So this is much easier to read. So you can see 1.3131 must be larger than 2 times k1 plus k2. Still a little bit of a strange condition, you might uh, say. But we'll use that later to check the actual region for our stability. So this is now the third condition. And so I need to really meet that. So it means actually the following. If I meet this and meet this, that doesn't mean I can meet this. So I, can, I have to check three of them. Let's check that in the next slide to make that precise. I have to work this out a little bit different. And so I have to rewrite this in this form it will be helpful. It means actually K2, I will keep it here or bring it there and then flip the sign. But I keep the K2 here and bring this two times K1 to the right hand, the left hand side. And I flip this uh, equation. I get this. This means actually k2 must be smaller than this value. So if I choose a k1, of course, by meeting this, uh, this condition, I can check now how much I can have for my k2. And again, checking that this is lower than zero. So I have to check then uh, several times. You can also make a plot of this. So you can say I place on the x and the y axis my k1 and k2. This is, of course, an equation. You can consider this as y and this as x. So this is actually a linear function which goes, uh, so it has a decreasing slope of minus 2. So I can say, well, okay, let's then check this first, the condition for k1. That means from minus 0 0.5 up to, uh, let's say, infinity, I am stable just considering this. That means if I place a vertical line here, from minus 0 0.5 up to higher value for k1, I am fine, considering only k1. But k2, here an orange dotted line, I have to be above that uh, zero, that means above the x-axis. So I have to be then in this form to go up. So everything above that orange line is then stable according to this second condition, just considering that second condition. Okay, now I have like a sort of a region where I can be. But of course, this is considering only these two. So if I look at the intersection, this, and everything here outside, so not in this region, not below that orange line, not at the left side of the red line, I am not stable, so unstable, unstable, still stable here. But I haven't used this condition or that condition. So for that, I need to draw the linear line, which goes down by... Uh, with a slope of minus two. So I can pinpoint two points. One is the starting, and I have also a slope of minus two. So I can know, okay, if I want to know what at at, uh, what value this k2 is zero, that is when this is of course equal to that one. And that happens, so this is the first dot, and the second dot is just divide this 1.3131 over two, I will get this value. So I have now two, uh, locations, two nodes or two points, I cannot draw my blue line. Okay, 
what did recognize this thing narrows our actual the initial uh, let's say assume uh, stable region it is much smaller now because this goes to this part also and this is also an intersection with that red line so i have another point which is the 2.3131 which will happen when this is minus 0 0.5 so it is at, at the edge and this will be a one one plus this value will be then 2.3131 which is shown here so this is actually the maximum value i can use for my k2 when minus when i have for k1 minus 0 0.5 now as you see is then we have now two intersections here and two regions and also this one another one third one where where we have actually the boundary so if i now uh, make sort of a region for that this green region is the allowed region for our gains specifically for our PI controller so this is interesting to note that not only two conditions will do the job you need to check all of them and make actually in this case a region because we have a 2d problem to, to do dimensional because we don't have one but two parameters to check okay Let's then do, check the simulation results and then go on towards the values. Well, now, first, this is the script, the code I have uh, developed in MATLAB. So this is the Z parameter for the discrete time system. And this is the S parameter for our continuous time. This is my plant. This is my sample period. And I use this command that means continuous to discrete time to convert my continuous time transfer function to the discrete time transfer function using this sample period of 0 0.4 seconds and this is the zero order hold operation to convert that continuous time signal to a discrete time system i have now k1 just selected 0.2 and for k to 0.5 that will do the job and i fulfill now all three conditions this is just an example i will also show you different examples this is a transfer function for our PI control, you can see the K1 plus K2 times Z over Z minus one directly actually in the Z domain. This is the closed loop transfer function that if we use the feedback function, feedback means, or you need to actually uh, use the following condition. Feedback, the first uh, entry is what you get in your forward path. So we get the controller times the plant all in the Z domain. This is the second entry, which is the how much uh, how much uh, systems you have in the feedback path. And this is the minus one for making sure that this is a negative feedback. If you forget this, it is in default form also negative feedback. Now you can use step TZ to set up unit step response of this close to the discrete time system. You can also check the poles using the pole TZ. Okay. Now if I run this in the MATLAB command window, this will appear in step-by-step -step format i just check the plan first this is correct also check the discrete time system using the sample time of 0 0.4 seconds it's all for fine k1 and k2 also check 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 so it's all correct and this is the transfer function for that pi controller in discrete time this is the closed loop transfer function and you can see already the poles and also the zero but this is also easy to see by doing pole TZ, you have now everything. And what you see is, this is the K2 and K1, and these are the poles. You can see the following. For this specific values of K1 and K2 for my PI controller, all poles are inside the unit circle. So this system is stable. Again, just an example to, to clarify you that this is can be done in the command window. But I will now do several other variations of k1 and k2 and also show you what's happening and that our values in our calculations are correct so let's first start with the unit step response of that k1 and k2 as we did in the command window there's a response so what you get is for this constraints we have 0 0.2 so above this so i am i fulfill this 0 0.5 so above this so again i fulfill this if i now do 0 0.2 here that means 2 times 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So 1.3131 minus 0 0.4 is 
definitely larger than the 0 0.5, so I also fulfill this third one. You can also see that, of course, in the plot. So this overshoot is 20.1, so it is not exploding, and I reach a final value, and I also reach one, that means I have a steady state error of zero because I have a PI controller. So I can say response reaches a steady state value, and this system is stable for these two values for the PI controller gains. Now let's now just adjust this value. So I have kept this 0.5. I made this from 0.2 to minus 0.5. That was, of course, the boundary because these were the constraints for the PI controller gains. I need to be above that minus 0.5 and I will now do it exactly minus 0.5. What do I get? Interesting result. I get an oscillation. That is also what you uh, should get because if you are at the edge, you should get an oscillation in this case. So of course you fulfill this, you also should fulfill this one, but you cannot fulfill this one because you will have now exactly minus 0.5. So it doesn't reach a steady state value, but it is not unstable. It is what we call marginal stable. So at the edge between stable and unstable, and this is an oscillation, pure oscillation. So if you go to higher uh, uh, seconds, so over the time, you will see exact the same uh, repetition again and again. So I have just plotted this from the zero to 40 seconds, but you can also plot it to 40,000 seconds. So you will get exactly the same periods. So we have now a pure oscillation because we have now checked or used for K1 exactly the boundary. Okay, that's interesting. Now, keeping now the K1 at zero, and then making K2 as large as possible. We know that must be, or it could be 1.3131, but I have now taken that a little bit smaller, just hair smaller. This is the response I get. You might ask, that's quite a disaster. It's not unstable. It is reaching some value, so it is not exploding, but this, these are the conditions. So I have, to, if I make K1 here zero, this K2 must be smaller than that one. So I fulfill that. So I do that. And I also have this. So it is larger than minus 0 0.5. And K2 is also now larger than that 0. So I get a stable system. But it's not really a fantastic result. Because there is quite heavy ringing and heavy overshoot here. But it is stable. What do I, why do I show this? To illustrate that this condition is indeed correct because if I now go a little bit up high a uh, hair uh, larger than this one I will see a problem so this is a, just a small addition here 0 0.001 and this is still k1 is still zero you can see just a very very small addition the thing goes out of control I can say definitely this system doesn't reach a steady state value it is unstable it's quite interesting to see just hair difference between K2 in the previous plot and this one will make the system from stable to unstable. And this is also a check that our values or what we have determined for the stability conditions are correct. So the K1 and a K2 and also this for the K2 is another condition in terms of K1. We need to meet that to have a stable system all right this was for this example specifically considering the pi controller gains to have a stable system so we have determined how we can determine the k1 and k2 and draw the region for stability and also check that using matlab simulations and we verify that our calculations are correct Okay, if you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share this video so that we can reach more people for this interesting topic. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another interesting video. Take care.